So everybody, hello, hello, hello. I'm so glad to see all of you this morning. Um, I'm so excited to recognize several of you on here. People actually wake up early in the morning for this. This is great <laughs> stuff. So, okay, so the lineup for today, this is gonna be very interactive. I am not going to make this a situation that there's questions afterwards. You're going to be participating from the very beginning with me. We're gonna be moving our bodies. We're going to be able to try to figure out what it means, this whole idea of playing and playing as an adult. Um, and then at the end, towards the end, we'll have about seven minutes of a little bit of chair yoga to just kind of um, loosen up and get us through the rest of the day. So are we ready for this? We got this, right? Yeah. All right. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. At any time, if you need, if you have any questions, if you want to interject, feel free to do so. You can raise your hand. You can shout out. You can do whatever you need to do to get our attention. And we'll do our best to make sure that we hear what you have to say. So as many of you are joining us this morning, we're talking about how to relax through play. So as we know, last year was a tough one. Last year made us really realize how much we crave to be around people sometimes, how much we really want to be able to get out and about. And once we know that our lives are restricted in such a manner, we rebel, we do whatever we need to do to just set ourselves free. But how many of us actually did something that was really fun in the midst of the chaos? What did we do to release some of the angst that we are holding on to? Um, what did we do to just get out and get about and feel ourselves within nature despite the chaos? So for all of you who just pretty much stayed around and did nothing and did not enjoy this peace and quiet, quiet in the midst of the chaos, I feel for you because it was hard to do. So with that said, I'm going to start off with some fun stuff. All right, bear with me. I've gotten myself into TikTok. One of my young friends, my friend's daughter, who's like 15 years old, every time she wants to communicate with me, she sends me a TikTok. I'm like, oh gosh. So I have to finally download TikTok to see what it's all about. So, and I found some really fun stuff, disturbing stuff at the same time, but the ones that I'm going to be sharing with you today, I think it's going to really set up the stage for us today. Share the screen. I, I do not own the rights to anything. This is on YouTube, it's free media. So I'm pretty much just showing what's already out there for us to enjoy. Morning. Uh, how many of you have gotten yourself caught up in TikTok? Don't be ashamed, it's all right. I'm, I'm not gonna, <laughs> You'll see what happens when you get on TikTok. I have to limit myself most of the time because I realize that it's easy to get sucked in. Let's have some fun. Let's see how many of you older women recognize this song and how it's been transformed in our ages these days. Hit it, hit it, hit it, hit it, get it, get it, get it, get it. Ow, 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 show them girl, yeah. Boom, boom, ba, 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 Hit it, hit it, hit it, hit it, get it, get it, get it, get it. Ow, 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 show them girl, yeah, boom, boom. Hit it, get it, get it, get it, get it. Ow, 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 show them girl, yeah, boom, boom, ba, ba. Hit it, hit it, hit it, hit it, get it, get it, get it, get it. Ow, 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 show them girl, yeah, boom, boom, ba, 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 Boom, 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 boom,
taking care of other people so much time worrying about other people mm -hmm. you wouldn't be here today if you knew that there was there needed to be something more to be done <laughs> how do you take care of yourself and how do you have fun taking care of yourself what have you been doing like how do you get the angst out of your system how do you get your stuff moving and going that was not planned <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay, that was good. <laughs> what does play mean to you? As grown folk, what does play mean to you? And this is not just a rhetorical question. I want some answers here because I'm not doing all this talking for the next 45 minutes by myself. What does I'm play mean to I'm learning to play the ukulele. You do? I'm nice. learning, yes. Okay. Mm. What else? What do you do? What do you do for fun, everybody? What have you been doing for fun? I quilt. Oh, nice. I like you to quilt. The big, um, the big ones and. Well, I have, but mostly I do uh, lap quilts, you know, with spiritual sayings on it for oh, like uh, members at my church. We have mm -hmm. a prayer shawl ministry. And so I, that during this COVID deal, that that's my relaxation. Oh, sweet. Since I, I can't so get out. I love to travel. So mm. that's on hold. Do mm -hmm. I need to take him to his appointment? Yeah. Somebody mentioned that they like to sing. I like to say I like to sing, but um, anybody else who hears me don't necessarily <laughs> be with me. So it doesn't happen to <laughs> you know. Um, so what else? What does it mean to you? Like not just the things that you're doing, but what does it mean to you? When you hear the word play, what does it mean to you? Having fun. Right. Having fun. Laughter. Yeah. Laughter. And the thing Me with play is that it's all, and yes, it's all inclusive. It's the music, it's the expressive arts, it's the, it's the drumming, it's the singing, it's everything that we do to make sure that we're living our best life and getting around and getting things done like we want to get it done. And it's like, whenever you hear music and if the, the, the theme is good and you hear that, you start moving, you start feeling and then you start wanting to just get all over the place. That's part of play. Laughter is part of play. 
watching a good movie, being with good company, traveling, that is all part of play. Dancing, drama, that is play. And as adults, I think we forget that sometimes. As adults, we, we, we think it's just for the kids. Well, mm -hmm. for those who don't know, play is not just for kids. <laughs> Why is play good for adults too? Like how much is are you holding on your shoulder? What have you been dealing with? Like how many of us have experienced major loss from the mm -hmm. pandemic and otherwise? Like what are we doing to make sure that we're taking care of our body as we try to take care of other people at the same time? When we're talking about play, mm -hmm. play is not just for children. Play is not just for just getting your stuff around and doing whatever you need to do. Play is also involved with the physiological and psychological health. It regenerate, regenerate, rejuvenates us. It brings us to a place of, of safety. It makes us really want to just shake things off and do what we need to do. And yes, I'm a big proponent of doing watching TV and hanging out with friends, but how many of us are actually active? How many of us actually have walked in lately? And I'm, I'm guilty of doing that myself. How many of us actually have found ways to really engage and do friends and do things? Uh, Joe Jackie, I see you raising your hand. Does that mean you've been doing all those good things that you've been yes. doing? <laughs> yes, and I've been enjoying myself. I started taking water aerobic classes. Oh, nice. Wow. That's really good. That's a good way to do it. Now, how many of you realize how much play is attached to how you react in your body? Um, when we think of healthy vagal tones and how it's associated with adults and, and outcomes of health, what does vagal tone even mean to you? Like, I know we have a lot of professionals out there, so what is the vagal tone? What am I talking about when I talk about vagal tone or vagus nerves? I don't know what that is. Okay, well, we're about to learn. <laughs> So when we talk about the vagus nerve, we're talking about the 10th cranial nerve that supplies the major organs of our body with a lot of nerves. Those are the things in our body that creates that fight or flight reaction to things that keeps us motivated or keeps us in place or keeps us stuck in general. So when we talk about the parasympathetic system, that's when the vagus nerve is inter um, in interconnected and is working and it's pumping and it's doing what it needs to do. When we don't have a great vagal tone, when it's like disrupted for a number of reasons, it keeps us stuck. It keeps us not being able to really express ourselves in the ways we want to. And it's also associated with positive emotions and executive function. So what does all that jargon mean? That means okay. if you're not getting out and about and doing what you need to do to feel your body, to release some of the angst that you're holding, you're gonna get stuck. You're going to be high, you know, you're highly susceptible to um, uh, diseases, to um, getting colds. And these days we can't afford any of that because we're not sure if it's a cold or if it's the virus or if it's the flu. So what are we doing to replenishing ourselves from the inside out? What do we need to do? How do we express ourselves? There's lots of studies that have showed that not only for children, but free play for adults is necessary. Free play means basically just letting it loose. You know, I, I started off with the TikTok because a lot of older folks are on TikTok, strange enough. They're on really? TikTok because it's been the only way to engage and to have fun. So many older folks from, from men to women to cultural norms, to <laughs> lack of cultural norms, have been getting out and about and figuring out ways to attach, to connect, and to have fun in the process. What have we been doing? Mm. As we know, this past year, the past two years, the past four years has really brought about so much <laughs> memories of things that we thought had changed. But it seems like every time we took a step forward in society, took there was a back. huge leap back. Mm -hmm. For many of us, the travesties that's been going on in the past year is no surprise when it came to civil unrest and anything else that goes on with black people, white people, people of colors, all of the spectrums. And we hold that, we hold that angst, we hold that pain. And for all of you who have gone through the 70s and 80s, even the 60s, isn't it horrific to have to go through this again? Mm -hmm. Is it horrific mm -hmm. that you have we actually have to sit back and say, hey, you know what? Nothing new. 
we become complacent. It's like we no longer have the energy for all those who are older. Don't we don't even me? I'm like 52. I don't have the energy to be on the front lines anymore. I don't have the energy to actually fight battles that were fought so many years ago, and here we are dealing with it again. How do we survive? How do we create the networks that keeps us safe? How do we just release some of the ugh, that we've been holding on to? Mm. Yes, many of us might have turned to drinking. Mm. Many of us might have turned to church. And even the church, it's amazing how much you <laughs> can do online now. Like everything can be do, done online before all of a sudden we could have all sorts of congregations. We could have all sorts of work from home activities. Everything that we thought was impossible once upon a time became possible during COVID. And as the, as the year taught us so many, different way, so many different things, one thing it taught me was that the need to stop, sit still, and to really reassess life. Reassess what we've been doing. Reassess how we have been you know, driven to just work, 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 work hoping that by the time we retire, we'll be able to enjoy our lives. But how, what happens when retirement doesn't come around? What happens if we become dismembered or we lose, lose our significant partner or we lose ourselves in, in the midst of confusion? Why do we wait so long to enjoy our lives? Why do, does it take so long to really appreciate what we have and just say, forget it. I'm here. I'm going to do the best that I can because tomorrow's not promised to me. That's true. How mm -hmm. do you do it though? Does it have to cost an arm and a leg? <laughs> you know, no. I love to travel and, and it took me a minute to be able, able to even go back on a plane this year because I realized <laughs> my anxiety kicked in. Um, I had panic attacks. I had to go visit my sister in Florida and I found myself on the plane hyperventilating. And I'm a psychologist. I'm supposed to know better, right? I'm sitting there hyperventilating. I'm like, okay, I had already wiped down the seats. My partner wiped down his seats. Everybody's like, we've got our neosporin in our hands. We've got, we're constantly, you know, uh, <laughs> cleansing our hands. But I was freaking out. And what I had to do is I had to talk myself off the cliff. Because I had to remind myself that the things I enjoy to do, I have to continue to find ways to do it. Because if I don't, all that is me, all that I enjoy in life can be so easily stripped away from me because we're in the midst of chaos and chaos will never go away, unfortunately. Just like the bills will never go away. Yeah. <laughs> Neither will chaos. So when we have to push through that angst, what do we call upon? We call our higher powers. We call the people that keep us safe. We trust ourselves that we will be able to get through it. And how do we make time for ourselves as we're trying to get through everything that we keep shoving down? Mm. What has been stopping you from, yes, the pandemic is the pandemic. The pandemic is here to stay. It's never gonna go away, it seems like. It's gonna be measured, it's gonna be inoculated, it's gonna be contained. But how about us? What residue effect has it had on us? How has it kept us paralyzed and not being able to tap to our higher self, our pleasurable self? I found that in the past year, I actually like being at home. <laughs> Strange thing enough, I haven't, you know, strangled my partner yet. Um, it works out well <laughs> um, on a good day. Like during the day when we're working, we're fine. It's after work, everybody wants attention. I'm like, We've been in the house together all day. It's okay. You do, go do you. I'm going to go for a walk. I'm going to do something else. It's okay. But how many of us know when to disconnect? Mm -hmm. How do we know when to fall back and say, hey, you know what? I can't do this right now. I need to take, take care of myself. For all of you who might have young kids, that bathroom break gets extended longer and longer. <laughs> You know, I've gotten into the habit, and so has my partner. We both bring our computers, our phones, and everything else in the bathroom, and we just sit there. I could hear him because, unfortunately, we have two bathrooms. I could hear him on the other side laughing away, and I know he's in the bathroom. He's watching something just to keep him <laughs> from strangling me as well. But what have you been doing? 
what has been your survival mechanism in this past year? The year of, can you know, when cancer, other health issues come up. How have you been true to yourself? Mm. I'd like yeah. to take this opportunity to really learn from each other. What has worked and what hasn't worked and how do you regroup and start over? Mm. Were you saying something, Juanita? Well, I have had a lot of uh, my husband's you know, illness. I know what it now seems, uh, feels like to be a caregiver. I, I still haven't learned yet. I'm learning slowly how to do things just for me. You know, it's taken a long, long time. You know, I tend to do this, 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 this. You know, I was late coming into the meeting because I go to physical therapy for me. I go at 7 a.m. in the morning. You know, I got a doctor's appointment for me at the work around things. So it's constantly going, going, going and doing. That's why I like to sit down and do piecing, you know, uh, with my quilting mm -hmm. uh, or, or crafting because that calms me. You know, I love to travel, but unfortunately, haven't been able to do it. And I love cruising. You know, I uh, had to cancel all of that out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, but I'm, I'm learning. I'm, I'm, I'm learning, you know, my dear friend, Lula, I was telling, all right, do take care of you, <laughs> you know, take care of you. And I'm, I'm, I'm learning slowly, but, you know, at least I'm making a step in that direction. Yeah. By all means, it's scary. Yeah. You know, taking that leap of faith and doing whatever you need to do to calm that that nervous system down works wonders. <laughs> yeah. You know, the finger stimulation, everything that you need to do to just decompress mm -hmm. makes a big difference. Yeah. Pauline, yeah. were you about to say something? I thought I heard you. Oh, maybe not. Um, so I'm just Sparling has her hand up, doctor. Oh, please. There you go. Thank you. Um, I um, most of my grandchildren are almost grown or grown, but I also have one who's almost two years old. Wow. And I, they send me videos of his, each new thing he learns to do. So I now have 300 videos. And when I'm feeling down, I sit down and I watch those videos and I can laugh till I cry. It's just wonderful. So that's been my special experience during all this. He me happy. So have they roped you into doing like, you know, grandma and, and grandchild TikToks or any of those? Unfortunately, they live in Detroit. I was there when he was born and I'm going back next week to see him. This is the first time I will have traveled. So I'm so excited. I need uh, weights on my feet to hold me down on the ground. <laughs> It's scary, isn't it? Just just knowing that what you need to replenish yourself is so far away, but at the same time, you understand why it needs to be so far away because there's a level of appreciation that we've had in the past year, at least I have. I never realized how much I crave things. I crave being around people sometimes. So yes. go ahead, Patricia, and then Dr. Lori. I was just um, following up with Sandra about grandchildren. They are just the love. I have two grandsons. One is six and one is eight. And they came, I'm in California, but I'm originally from Philadelphia. And that's where my daughter is now living. She was born here and decided to move there. But it was, I took her to one of my high school reunions and she stayed. Long story short, they came out here for about eight months to hang out with grandma and I don't even swim, but I taught them to swim because we have a pool here and I took them every day and they learned how to swim. And I'm so proud of myself. I told myself, you know, you can't swim, but you're going to get in that pool if they show any kind of distress. And it was just wonderful. Both of them learned how to swim. And I like Miss Sparling, I look at their videos and it just brings such joy because I took videos as they were in the pool in the eight feet with water wings. That is, by the way, water wings are a gift from God. So just letting you know. 
<laughs> so they didn't turn around and teach you how to swim? Uh, no. It's good to look at, not to go in for too deep. It's just, it's real. I, I just have a weird thing about me. I never learned. Um, I was, I was a fear. I have a fear of water. That's what it is. I can do all the strokes in like three feet, but once I can't stand up, it goes away. It's in my head. <laughs> But I told myself, if anything happened with those boys, I'm getting in that tip, that eight feet, throwing them out, no matter what happens to me. So, so you all but, of a sudden you'll learn how to swim quickly too. I know, yeah. I hear you. I love the water. I love being around the water. But as soon as I can't see the bottom of the ocean or the exactly. floor, I start freaking out. Freak and out. people yeah. have tried so hard to teach me how to swim. It just, it just doesn't take. I've been thrown over. I'm like, okay, <laughs> nope. <laughs> Took swimming lessons. Nope. Yep. Not gonna happen. <laughs> All of that and still, but whatever. <laughs> Go ahead, Dr. Lori. Well, hello. 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 I'm so glad that you're here. Um, I have enjoyed um, spending time with my grandchildren, baking with them, and you know, gaining a little extra pounds, but I've lost some of my pounds. But the fun thing about it is helping them teach math through baking and watching them, you know, calculate it in their head and then actually, you know, putting it to test by, you know, we make cookies or we make some type of uh, dinner mm -hmm. together. And another thing that I've really gone back to in terms of play for me is actually going back and getting massages. And in yes. when I'm getting a massage, yes. I, you know, I, I set aside little, my little mad money so that I can go get a massage and mm -hmm. planning that. And then when I'm learning how to relax, because it's so interesting that just taking for granted, uh, just breathing. Mm -hmm. And when you're not breathing, you're at stress. And mm -hmm. so by having a massage, you're learning how to let go and still be able to breathe at the same time. And then thinking about wonderful places, relaxation in my mind. And that's so very helpful because when nice. you don't get a massage, then you need to take those skills and start doing them at home or when you're in the car, when you're feeling stressed, um, you know, rotating your neck, side to side, raising your arms, getting stress relief. Really. <laughs> And sometimes even just plain yelling out the car, like you're a crazy driver, get out the way. <laughs> Move, you're crazy. <laughs> and then they look around to see if anybody heard you. Heard you. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's so. the most amazing thing when you think of the silliness. Cause like when we look at kids, like they could be as silly as they want to be. They say the silliest thing and they're like, they start cracking up. When did we stop doing that? Mm. When did we just stop, you know, when did we stop, stop laughing at ourselves? You know, there are times I'll just be walking and I trip. I'm like, oh gosh, thank you for not, you know, breaking a hip or a bone. But it's like the naturalness of just enjoying and realizing <laughs> it's okay to laugh. It's okay to shake that body. It's okay to get it out of your system. The beauty about massages and any body work is that it's helping the, the body release some of the craziness it holds on to, some of the pain that it holds on to. As many of you might have heard, the body keeps the score. Your body remembers all the trauma. Your body remembers everything, all the tension. And as we think about how the mind and the body react to each other, where does the pain start kicking in? You've got that migraine. You've got that backache. Mm -hmm. You've got that stiffness. You can't move around. You can't do anything. You feel old. Mm -hmm. And sorry, but old is a state of mind. Yeah. Keep that body mind. moving. You have, yeah. you, have, yes. you have a hand. Renee, go for it. Renee? Okay, I think she's just trying to figure something out. Oh, so she needs to unmute herself. 
Renee, whenever you pop back in, it's okay. You can chime in. And Madam uh, Mayor is on the line. I don't know yes, if you want to make a comment. Oh. Hi. Um, good morning, ladies. I'm just listening and I'm going from <laughs> workshop to workshop. So when I pop out, it's not that I don't, I'm just popping my head into all the workshops. So continue on. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming. Okay. Yeah. Hello. Hi, everyone. Can anyone hear me now? Hi. We can hear you now, Renee. Yes. Oh, I just wanted to say you were talking about um, massage. I'm so sorry. I can't be on camera. I'm working and I'm indecent, but I just wanted to <laughs> comment on the massage part. So um, this week, Dr. Arnold forced me to go and get a massage. I had some, time? some work stress going on and she asked me what I was doing for self-care and I told her, I can't even have that conversation with you right now. That's how heavy I was. She was like, nope, you're going to go and take care of yourself. So not mm -hmm. only did I go and have the massage and do what I needed to do, but I also <coughs> came back and shared that with my girlfriends to make sure that they also engaged in the same practice. And there was actually something very cathartic and healing about that as well, of not just hoarding this newfound kind of relaxation, playful place, but also letting other people know. And now ladies are talking about, hey, we need to, you know, get together and do this. We need to celebrate each other and make sure like on a, a consistent basis that we are doing this for ourselves and for each other. So I just kind of wanted to put that out there. It's not just about our own playfulness, but finding play dates, finding people, other people to play with, which will reinforce it. Mm -hmm. I don't... Go ahead, Juanita. Oh, I wanted to ask Dr. Arnold, where's this massage place? Because I know I need it. And I have one right here. I have a card right here, Sparadise. <laughs> That's where I go every six weeks for a massage. Oh, wait, hold, hold it straight. What's Sparadise? Sparadise. It's in oh, Sermon Sparadise. Oaks. Okay. Put it in the chat. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. It's in Sherman Oaks, California. I don't know how the, far the, that is. All over the place. That, that's far. Yeah. It's, but is there anything the closer? Place. Is there something closer? I, I went to Burke Williams. Right oh, here I know. On uh, Crenshaw and uh, PCH. PCH. Yeah. And, and, and let me tell you, Flora. Flora. Right? Flora, <laughs> Flora <laughs> honey. Okay. Flora. Okay. Mm -hmm. And tell her about yeah. how poor it was, Renee. Yeah. Tell her. You know, people, they they go to school, they take their training God. to get what they need to do to operate in the profession. But some people are just, they're gifted. Mm -hmm. This lady, mm -hmm. she just healed me. Okay. And it was her demeanor. It was her technique, but it was also her demeanor. Okay. And she created an <clears throat> environment of healing, not just I'm gonna rub on you for this 45 minutes and then mm -hmm. I'm gonna go on to the next person. It was like, right. you know what it is it that you need right now in this okay. moment. Okay. Flora, honey. All right. <laughs> I will I will check. I will check Flora. I went to a, a Burke yeah. Williams over in I think it's Santa Monica many, many years ago. Oh, wow. And I know where the one is over there on uh, Crenshaw and PCH. Uh, I think I'm going to have to cut out some time and uh, go see Flora. We have to. Go ahead, Christy. I see your hands up. Did you want to say something too? Oh, yes. I want to comment in on a lot of what the ladies are saying. I too, um, in the beginning of the pandemic, um, I thought I was going to be happy with it, with not going to work and working remote. And now I currently have two jobs and I realized that I needed to be out there. So I did the painting and got all the little stuff because we're at home. We couldn't go anywhere. But then I realized I did need that um, human interaction. And I'm someone who also has a membership at Burke Williams. And I was going to the spa every couple of weeks and I was mm -hmm. unable to go in. So, um, and my lady actually quit and her name was Shannon. She worked at Torrance. So I use a service where you can have them come to your house and they can set up the whole environment. And even mm -hmm. with that, I started um, giving myself bubble baths and taking myself back to like watching little funny YouTube videos and creating yes. a whole spa experience at my house if you are still like kind of scared to go out there, there is services online with everything. Like you can even have people come out and set up a picnic in your backyard if you want some vitamin D with sunlight, you know? Mm -hmm. I did a whole, I do that. So I got back into 
you know, listening to frequency music at night, which is good for your brain stimulation. Uh, when you're having a very stressful day and just had that play throughout nice. the night. Um, nice. I've done a lot of things. So um, yeah, if you don't want to go into the spa, I have a couple of ladies too, um, black owned who come to your house and set up a whole environment for you, or you can um, use a massage online app and you can modify however you want hot stones and things like that. Mm. And I also have ladies to come out, do your toes, and your nails, and all that. Don't forget your feet. Don't forget it's a head to toe movement, okay? Right. Because your feet, you're on your feet all the time. Your feet, you start noticing all sorts of like angst in your feet. That's what I was saying earlier. I see Dr. Spalding, give me a minute. Uh, that's what I was saying in terms of like making sure your body is being taken care of because when your mind starts going on you, it starts reverberating in the rest of your body. Your feet starts aching, your back starts aching, aching your, your hips start aching, the migraine kicks in. Your body is telling you all it needs to know, it's all you need to know. How do we stop and pay attention to it? How do we figure out how to release some of that angst? Go ahead, Dr. Spalding. <laughs> I um, wanted to say that I had a wonderful time all by myself yesterday. I soaked my feet. I put Epsom salts in hot water, not too hot, but warm enough and soaked my feet and then did my own nails and stuff like that. And that was just really relaxing. And I felt my feet felt wonderful. And also mm -hmm. I've started uh, asking Siri to give me the Christian music station in the morning. And I dance, dance while I'm brushing my teeth and dance while I'm, well, there's not mm -hmm. a lot of home, but combing mm -hmm. my hair. And so those two things have been really, really relaxing and Mm -hmm. I don't know, enjoyable. Just start my day off with fun. Mm -hmm. yes. And play doesn't have to be so extravagant. Play means different things to different people. Last year, I realized that I could not be indoors for too long because I'm one who loves to travel. So we modified our travel plans. We packed up the car, either got an Airbnb, I would, because you're driving, I had all my sanitation stuff, all my waxes, everything I need to do, because we're hitting the road. And I just, there was something so liberating about being able to go out and control your environment and still be out. Like seeing nature, appreciating what you have around. People will think I'm crazy, but I will just, I will come with my Lysol in a minute. You know, <laughs> I was like, I've got my pillows. I've got the first time we decided to venture out, I brought my Lysol, my pillows, my sheets, my, my, my wipes, my, my, like everything. I'm like, oh, I'm not touching anything. I go in the door and clean. The but it made me feel good. It made us feel good to get out. And it was relaxing at the same time because not too many people were on those streets. <laughs> you know, it was still in the midst of chaos. It was in July and everybody's like, ooh, no way. I'm like, oh, perfect. We're going out. <laughs> There's nobody out. This is wasn't traffic wonderful down in LA area? I mean, like I'm i marvel over the things that are still simple but bring so much joy. Simple as there's no traffic. Let's get out and do something. <laughs> Um, because the traffic in itself creates so much anxiety. It's so anxiety provoking. People could be so mean. I could be too. So I have to admit to that. I'll admit to that. But when we think of play, it's not just for the kids. It's not just like going out and doing something big. It's as easy as setting up a camp or a tent in your backyard. <laughs> um, if you have a backyard, it's as easy as just like, you know, baking. I... I, I got on the keto bandwagon last year and it was just so many different things to bake and cook and we were doing cooking shows with our friends and it was just like, wow, this is like being on vacation like forever. <laughs> there was something pleasurable about being able to say, hey, I'm sad, I'm miserable, I'm holding a lot of angst, but I recognize that and I wanna do something different. I recognize that and I know that you cannot pour from a, an empty vessel. I recognize that and I cannot function and I can't take care of somebody else if I'm not putting my own mask on. You know, for those travelers, put on your oxygen mask first before you put it on, you could help anybody else. We have to find better ways of taking care of ourselves because that's all that's left. When our body starts giving up on us, there's only so much we can do to give um to help anybody else. 
Mm-hmm. And if you're taking care of family, friends, kids who are <laughs> ill, that massage comes in handy. Just that five minutes of saying, I need to get mm-hmm. out for a minute. Mm-hmm. I love you. I'll come back to you. But <laughs> I need to just Chill. replenish. Yes. yes. And that replenish oh, means so much to come back and say, oh, okay. Whew, I'm glad I got that. In. Okay, so where were we again? How do we regroup? Replenish. So when I asked earlier, what does play mean to you? You've said it in so many different ways. It's the cooking that perfect meal or trying to cook that perfect meal or experimenting <laughs> with that perfect meal. It's, it's soaking your feet. It's getting that body touched. You know, it's not about sexual stuff. It's about your body needing to be moved. The the veins need to get itself moving. Your brain needs to be stimulated or not. You know, I binge watch a lot of stupid stuff. And then I'm like, uh, why did I do that for? All right, okay, next. The bottom line is how do we take care of ourselves and not feel guilty about it? That's the key. And why do we feel guilty? You shouldn't feel guilty about doing something for yourself. You just shouldn't. Well, I'm going to assume there's a majority of you on here are female women. So I'll send this message out in terms of we've been programmed to think that way, that we are servants to others, that Mm -hmm. a lot of us don't feel worthy to take care of ourselves because our sense of self is connected to somebody else. Right. Our sense of purpose is connected to somebody else. We feel guilty if we even take a moment out for ourselves. Where did we get that message? Mm. How did that get programmed? How did it work for our parents? How is it working for you? (sighs) Being married for 34 years, woo. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and how do we keep perpetuating the myth that you have to do everything yeah. like the first moment your spouse or whatever said um, no they can't do something how many of us babied them <laughs> my mother would always get on my, ner- my case I say my nerves my mother used to get on my case all the time because she didn't realize I knew how to cook <laughs> She didn't know I knew how to cook because for her, for me to cook in the house when we were growing up, it meant I had to take care of my brothers. One is older, one is younger. And I would always resent that because the boys would always have so much freedom. They were all, you know, pampered and spoiled and they'll just get up and leave things behind. And it's like, oh, my mother would come back from work. It's like, why is the dish there? I was like, I didn't put it there. Yeah. rebel without a cause <laughs> why didn't you clean up after? I'm like why should I wait seriously what we would get into some serious arguments about that because the message was passed on that as a woman it's your responsibility to take care of everything and everyone else and the burden that it and the toll it takes on us so all my partners that I found like you know all the guys that I dated they all knew how to cook and clean my current partner, my mother's gone. Did you, uh, when I talk to my mother, oh, how's he doing? Did you cook for him? I'm like, I wasn't hungry. <laughs> I was like, seriously, you don't cook for him? I'm like, he's not selfish. He's a grown man. He knows how to cook, clean, and do the laundry. We're good. In fact, he's an early riser. So for me, it's like I'm not. I'm not an early riser. He's up at five, six o'clock in the morning. Like, sweetie, I don't have kids. So you can get up and cook for yourself. And it's worked out because he actually loves to cook. But how many of us that I know that somebody just put in there too, they feel guilty if they don't do what is expected of them. And where did that expectation come from? And how do we release ourselves of that expectation? It's not being selfish. I love to cook. I just don't like being demanded to cook. I don't mm-hmm. like to cook because That's I it. have to cook. If right. I'm cooking, I'm cooking because I am feeling it. When I yes. want to give it and I want to yes. share it or I have an inkling for something specific. Yes. Now, it's different when you're parents. Different stuff happens with different parents. But like 
for those who have partners and who are raising kids together, what, who was always the one cooking and cleaning and, and taking care of everybody and their grandmother and, and so on and so forth? Whatever. How do we say, how do we change that up? Because we don't have much left. Mm -hmm. And Tracy, I'm sorry that you feel like you cook because you have to, because to me, there's a certain level of when you're creating something, be it a cooking, a meal, you put so much love and emphasis into it. You put so much love into it. And the more you're doing it freely, the more you're doing it because it's the love that you were, you were pushing off on learning and teaching other people to do. And how do we pass down to the next generation that it's okay <clears throat> you know, to do something different? Because we don't have much time. Again, last year proved that we don't have time. We don't have time to be holding on to the anxieties. We don't have time to be holding on to the bitterness and the resentfulness because of gender specific roles that we've been given. Because we're falling apart. We fell apart many times and we had to get up and keep doing what we need to do. We need to do a better job at uh, taking care of ourselves because nobody else is going to do it for us. And that's not true. There are those who will do it for us. That's, that's we can't. There are those who will take care of us who's got our backs. But it's a give and take. It's a mutual thing. It's a release. It's cathartic. It's, cathartic. it's like, oh my gosh. I'm having fun, I'm cooking, and I'm having fun, not because I have to or I feel guilty if I don't. I'm getting that massage because I know that it'll be beneficial for the whole family if I get some of the rage out before I get back in the house. I'm singing because I feel it. You know, sometimes I get up, I start humming, and my partner will get annoyed. He's like, why are you humming? I'm like, don't you realize if I'm humming, that's a good thing for you? <laughs> it's like, that's a good thing for you. Are you making so much noise? I'm like, I'm happy. I'm in a good space. I'm being silly. I'm, I'm, I'm just being. When was the last time you were just being? And with that, and all that talking and that, all that appreciation, I want to get to the point of wrapping up with just making sure that we're taking the last 10 minutes that we have, actually last six minutes that we have together, to take care of ourselves as simple as just seven minutes. So, you guys ready to do this with me? Ready. Have you ever tried um, chair yoga before? Who? What? Chair yoga, doing yoga in your, in your seat. Oh. No, no, let's do it, let's That's do it. Yeah, let's do we it. Got a few minutes. Yeah, we're ready. Gonna, ready. This is self-care, this is what we're talking about, what self-care is about. Okay. Were you sitting at your desk, people annoying the hell out of you? You're gonna do this. <laughs> I was like, all right, zone out. What, 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 where'd you go? I'm right here. I'm not, oh. I'm not, I'm right here. We're coming. Okay, ready? Ready. ready? ready. Get into a comfortable position. Focus in, and here we go.
Thank you. Thank you so much for joining me today. You can find this video online on YouTube. Go forth and conquer. Breathe deep today. And be the best version of you that's left. Thank you, everybody. If anybody has any lingering questions, feel free to ask. If not, Bye, beautiful black black. Thank you. Thank Bye. you. Thank you, Thank doctor. You. And everyone, please access the main link to go back to the main session. And thank you, everyone. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat>